Mike, thanks for joining us today off the back of what's been a busy few months for Red Bank Copper, um, with some serious exploration uh, being made across your extensive land holding in the MacArthur Basin. Firstly, can you give us a recap of the programs you've completed over the recent months and what are you looking to achieve here? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, I've got some pretty tired geologists that have returned from the field in the last couple of weeks. So uh, really, uh, this all started in August last year out of the um, office that I'm speaking to you from. This used to be the photocopy room with no photocopier. Since then, we've had two field seasons uh, out at the Red Bank project, which is on the Northern Territory Queensland border. Uh, in July, we pegged an additional 8,000 odd square kilometres of ground. So in total, uh, with granted an application ground, we've got about 13,000 square kilometres of ground. So as you can imagine, that's a very large area. Um, it's about 270 kilometres from end to end and stretches from the Northern Territory Queensland border west to the MacArthur mine. So this season, we've had a number of geological teams out there undertaking field mapping and soil sampling. And also we've been resampling drill core that's in core sheds that are out at the Red Bank project. So what we're trying to achieve from that, the first thing we have an existing Jork 2004 resource, and we're trying to update that 2004 resource to Jork 2012. To do that, we need to resample uh, and re-assay the existing drill core that's there. Now, that sounds pretty easy, but the resource currently is just under 100,000 tonnes of contained copper, and we've resampled about 4,000 metres of drill core to submit to the assay lab to ensure that when we come out with our 2012 resource, it's properly updated and we've got a very robust resource to work from. So that's a resource that'll be just under 100,000 tonnes. The challenge is to try and triple that resource. So what we've been doing with our soil sampling programs and with our field mapping is trying to locate copper that is in addition to the copper that's in the breccia pipes. Thanks, Mike. You mentioned the hunt for a potential stratabound copper system, which may sit below the existing breccia pipes that you mentioned there at the, at the Red Bank project. Uh, without getting into too much technical detail, can you talk us through the strategy behind looking for a system of this nature? And why are these the systems that the explorers desperately want to un uncover? So uh, as people that are listening to this probably uh, know, there's, uh, there'll be uh, existing shareholders of Red Bank and potentially uh, new shareholders of Red Bank listening in to this, uh, this talk. The copper price has been going up uh, over the last six months and there's a lot of copper projects that are currently undeveloped in third world and developing uh, countries. It's very rare to be able to capture a whole district with copper potential in a first world jurisdiction like Australia. So the first thing you do is secure the ground. The second thing you do is identify what geoscientists call foundation data sets. So these are the data sets like aeromagnetics, uh, ground gravity, airborne electromagnetics and soil sampling. And within those data sets, what you're trying to do is trying to find a signal that identifies whether there is a copper mineralization below the surface of the ground. So first pass exploration is to grab a hold of these foundation data sets. Now, the advantage that Red Bank has is that Geoscience Australia, so Australia's national geological survey has already collected a large amount of this data as part of their exploring for the future program. So over the last four years, they've spent about $100 million and a large part of that area that they focused on is in an area between the MacArthur mine, moving east to the NT border and then down to Mount Isa. So a lot of that ground we pegged in July, which is part of that 13,000 square kilometres. One of the uh, key dust sets that they also recorded was some seismic lines. So seismic is generally used in the petroleum industry to locate hydrocarbons um, and petroleum reservoirs. The seismic uh, lines that they uh, ran were ran over existing roads. And one of those lines ended about 30 kilometers from the Red Bank project. So previously the MacArthur Basin has been assumed to be about 
four and a half kilometres until you get to basement. That seismic line suggests that the basin is 15 kilometres deep. That's a big space for you to strip out copper from the uh, basin sediments and also from the volcanic rocks that are in there and organise to refocus them. Now, one of the places that the copper has been refocused is into the breccia pipes. So we're pretty excited about the geological terrain that we're in and also our understanding that's improving week by week as we look at these foundation data sets. So it seems the exploration strategy and potential for a serious copper discovery is crystal clear. And as a result, it looks like you've beefed up your technical team with some very experienced uh, people to help get things done. How have you been able to attract such high caliber people into the team? First thing, like I said before, is you've got to secure the ground. Then you've got to get attract good people, um, as, you've, as you've suggested we've done. Now, one of the ways of, of doing it is to actually pick good ground because the good people will be attracted to the good exploration ground. So one of the examples there is a recent uh, appointment as a director on the board, Bruce Hooper, who's uh, just come over from Sandfire. And uh, Bruce was attracted to the copper potential in uh, frontier terrain in the MacArthur Basin. We've also been able to attract a number of other consultants that have previously worked in areas like the Zambian uh, Copper Belt. And so we have a team of people that have got a lot of experience hunting for these strata-bound copper systems. Thanks, Mike. So just to wrap things up, can you provide us with an insight into what we should be keeping an eye on um, as you as we go into the new year? Yeah, so I feel a bit sorry for the uh, assay lab in Mount Isa because over the last couple of months, we've, uh, we've sent uh, thousands of samples to them for assaying. So what's happening over Christmas is that assay lab is processing those samples and reporting assay results uh, to us. We're going to wait until all that assaying is completed and we expect uh, thousands of assay results to be back to us sometime in early January. It'll take us a week or so to compile all that information and then report it out to the market. So there's going to be a lot of news flow on data that's coming out to the market. In addition to that, we're going to be working on updating the JORC uh, resource estimate. And so the assay results we get back are going to feed into that resource estimate. One of the last things I want to mention is the drilling program that we did uh, just a couple of months ago, and that was drilling on top of the Sandy Flats tailings dam. So we've drilled that tailings dam to understand how much copper is in the tailings uh, dam there. And uh, I'm pretty excited about reporting those results uh, over the next uh, month or so and through January and into February. Thanks for the update, Mike. Uh, happy holidays. Enjoy your break and we'll chat in the new year. Thanks very much, Alex. Good to talk to you.